everyone. Today I'm showing you how to make this dresser. It's a simple dresser and it's actually easy enough that you can build it over a weekend. And it is small enough that it can also work as a nightstand. I decided to kind of take it up a notch with this patterned veneer and I'm really, really digging how it turned out. I have the full detailed plans and tutorial on how to build this on my website. And let me walk you through exactly how I made this. I had some walnut plywood left over from another project which I recently built, which I can't wait to share soon. But I decided to use it for this project. I cut it down on my table saw and it was just enough to build the outer box for this dresser. It would have been amazing if I had had enough plywood to create a waterfall edge but I didn't have enough length, so we just ended up with simple joints. I have the full cut list and plans on my website. Before assembling, I decided to apply edge banding to all the exposed edges. So basically all around the top and bottom piece and long edges of the side pieces. I'm using my little Cricut mini press here, which is really easy to handle and gets as hot as any other iron, but you could use any regular iron as well. I use my sander at a low speed to grind down any extra edge banding and make the edges smooth. Once sanded, the edge looks like a solid piece of wood. Now to start assembling. I set up my Craig jig to make the pocket holes. I am using a Craig 720, which automatically adjusts for the thickness of the board. But if you're using any other version or any of the older versions, you can set it up for three quarter inch settings. Once ready to assemble, I attach the side to the bottom with wood glue and one and a quarter inch pocket hole screws. You have to be very careful to make sure that the boards are aligned as you add the screws. Then it was time to attach the top. I used clamps to hold everything in place. This is a good time to measure for square and adjust before you add the screws. Once everything was square, I went ahead and added the pocket hole screws. I checked it once again for square and left it to dry overnight. The next day, the box was done and ready to go. But there was one last thing that I needed to add, which was the cross support at the top. For this, I used a scrap piece of plywood and cut it down to length and attached it using pocket hole screws. Now let's build the legs. The legs have a slight angle at 10 degrees. When cutting angles, I like to set up my saw at that angle and just leave it for all the cuts for consistency. To cut the legs, I used the cut off as a stop block and made all my cuts. Then I made the cuts for all the other parts of the legs. I like to use the cutoff to give me an estimate of the direction of the cuts when making angled cuts. I made pocket holes in the legs where needed and went ahead and attached them all using two and a half inch pocket hole screws and wood glue. Now, as you can see, I did mess up the pocket holes. In the angled boards, you can only make one pocket hole on each end. Once the front and back of the legs were ready, I attached the short sides and then I went ahead and assembled the entire leg frame. I took it outside and gave it a few coats of primer followed by metallic oil rubbed bronze spray paint for that metallic look. Now for the drawers. The drawer boxes are made from 1x6 boards and I cut them up on my miter saw. 
The plans on my website have all the dimensions that you need to build these. Once again, I made pocket holes and got ready to assemble. All right, you guys, we're gonna go ahead and build the drawer boxes. Now, for the drawer boxes, I'm keeping them super simple. I'm using pocket holes to put them together and I am just going to attach the drawer bottom onto that box that I built. Now you could totally use a table saw and route out a channel to insert the drawer bottom, but I'm just gonna keep it simple and put it together this way. I have built these many times before and I have never had any issues with the strength of the boxes. So let's go ahead and do that. Building the drawer boxes is exactly like building the body of the dresser, but at a smaller scale. Plus, the pocket holes can be on the outside, making it easy to clamp and keep everything aligned. So this is the drawer box, but the first thing we're going to do is check for square, which we're going to do as soon as we, I find my tape measure. So to check for square, we are going to measure each of these diagonals and they should be exactly identical. Now, this one here is about an eighth of an inch longer than the other one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to push the longer one until it compensates for the shorter one. But because this is built with pocket hole screws, I am not strong enough to push it. So I'm going to use a clamp and Try to push it together. So all I'm going to do is put the clamp on and give it a very light squeeze and check the other one again and yep it's good. I let the drawer box dry overnight and came back and attached the bottom with wood glue and finished nails. And that is one drawer, two drawer, and three drawers. I went ahead and attached all the drawer slides. I am using full extension ball bearing drawer slides. Even though they are expensive, I love how they work and their durability. To attach the bottom slide, I used a scrap plywood to support the slides as I installed them. For the other drawer slides, I used a drawer slide jig to help support and align the slides as I was attaching them. Once all the drawer slides were attached, it was time for the drawer fronts. For the drawer fronts, I ripped up some oak plywood I had left over from my kitchen floating shelf project. I used 8 inch spacers and aligned and attached the fronts using finished nails which will be hidden later by the pattern. Then I added finished screws from the inside to hold the fronts together. And all the drawers are in. You can stop right here, but I wanted to add the veneer pattern to the front, which I cut up on my Cricut. To attach the veneer, I applied wood glue very carefully, almost like dabbing it on a stencil. The glue should be uniform and thin because you don't want it on the other side or squeezing out later when you attach it to the drawer front. I aligned it to the drawer front starting at the center and used masking tape to hold it down while it dried. I noticed that the veneer starts to curl up with the wood glue on it, so you have to sort of work fast and also make sure everything is well aligned as you tape it down. I added lots and lots of tape to hold it all down and then also some books for extra measure to, while it dried overnight. Maybe it was an overkill, but I just wanted it to be uniform and nicely adhered. The next day, I took off the tape and added walnut edge banding around the drawers. I cleaned it up and applied a finishing oil to bring out that gorgeous walnut grain. I went ahead and aligned and attached the legs to the bottom of the dresser with 2 inch wood screws.
and then I added the perfect golden knobs. And this is it. I have a whole bunch of easy beginner friendly woodworking projects. So be sure to check that out. Let me know if you have any questions and don't forget to hit subscribe.